welcome to this episode of the Desert Tiger Podcast. Here with me, your host, Colton G. And on this episode of the DTP, we're joined by Tennyson King. As we dive behind his new single, Garden of Truth. Yes, Tennyson King has been planting some seeds, and now we're going to be going into the garden, seeing what fruit has prospered from these efforts. The positive vibe, post apocalyptic single, Garden of Truth. We're diving behind the music on it today what the crafting process was like for this single for Tennyson King because normally Tennyson is sort of a traveling nomad. He likes to spend a lot of time on the road, a lot of time touring through places like Australia, Hong Kong. He's also seen some things like wildfires and protests through a lot of those journeys. So we're also going to talk about how that has sort of influenced His other 2020 single, Wild Rose, we're going to be talking about how he has sort of adapted to not being able to travel, not being able to go about the musical world in his usual manner. We're also going to be talking about some advice for living out on the road, living out of a van. I know that some of you may be Want to get out there and experience that journey once the road opens up? Well, Tennyson's going to have a few words of advice for you. And then we're also going to be diving into some of the details of Tennyson King's upcoming album as well. All of this, all of this, and more in this episode of the Desert Tiger Podcast here with... TK and it is all brought to you today by Desert Tiger Merch.com because that's where you go to grab yourself something to represent and show your love of the show. And with the holidays coming up fast and stock getting low, I've warned you about toques getting low. We have sold out of certain sizes of different shirts. We will not be getting reorders in time to get those sent out. So if you want something in time to celebrate Desert Tiger and your holidays in style, head on over to DesertTigerMerch.com. And now, now it's about time that we span some music. Got the vibe right, so how about it? Because this is... Garden of Truth. The sun it never hits our window. No shadows cast into the room. Face down, try to breathe. i 
across another sunny day. We'll grow. Desert Tiger Podcast. I hear music. Hello. How's it going? It's going pretty good. How are you, TK? I am doing good. I'm, yeah, you can hear me all good, right? I can hear you just fine. All right. Sweet. How's your day going? Oh, it's going pretty good so far. I can't complain at all. How about yourself? Yeah, it's been good. I'm just, uh, just working. I'm going into the studio this weekend to finish working on... Um, my full length album so I'm, i've just been kind of prepping for that all week okay okay getting all the material down making sure that it's ready exactly so yeah so it's good lots of music playing which is always nice <laughs> nice and it's always good to go into the studio prepared too not a lot of people uh, think through that process <laughs> well and i have the luxury of actually being having a bit more time this you know with everything happening as well so that's nice very true. Normally you would be overseas at this point, wouldn't you? Uh, I would, yeah. Actually, I'd be just kicking off an Australian tour right around now. So, yeah, instead I'm here. <laughs> a little bit of a change of pace, but it gives you the opportunity to get back into the studio and make something to uh, tour on once everything opens back up. Yeah, exactly. And you're, are you, you're out west? I'm located out of Kamloops, British Columbia currently. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, yeah. Where are you out of right now? Um, I'm currently in Mississauga. Okay. Um, it's like I don't know if you know where it is, but it's right beside Toronto, pretty much. Yeah, sort of a GTA area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I'm actually coming out to um, I'm moving out to Kelowna for the winter, actually. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna kind of just ski bum it up for the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame you. I mean, it's always good to get out and actually get somewhere where you can enjoy the season. I know, man. Yeah, exactly. Not sure how much skiing there is out in Mississauga. There is none. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I so... mean, like, there, there is, like, really shitty Ontario, like, hills that, that's not really a mountain kind of thing. Okay, so I'm from Saskatchewan where there's only like two oh, or three okay. ski hills <laughs> is what we call them. But yeah, so <laughs> I understand what you mean. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, all right. So we're here to connect a little bit about your upcoming single. Then this interview drops, it'll be out, Garden of Truth, as well as a little bit about your musical journey as well. Yeah, um, well, yeah, Garden of Truth is coming out November 12th, which is next week. And it's actually the second song I've put out during this crazy pandemic, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, um, period of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I actually, I co-wrote this song with Daniel Rougeau, who's a musician based out of Montreal. And uh, we were actually just one day kind of, I guess, venting our, our, our grievances with each other of like lack of shows and and cancellation of tons of tours and stuff and just the need to create for the sake of creating and, and healing. So we just started sending some ideas back and forth and he sent me this super cool kind of chord progression with a bit of a, 
guitar melody line and I just started writing to it and we pretty much wrote the song in like in like two hours of just sending stuff back and forth oh really yeah it was one of those quick quick ones I also kind of went into this song not stressing or worrying about making it sound any specific way if you know what I mean yeah Um, like sometimes when I go like do my past records or other songs there might be like a bit of agenda agenda like okay we want to make this one radio friendly or we want to make this one fit this kind of vibe or whatever um but this one i was just kind of like whatever we write and whatever feels good coming out let's just let's just stick with it and 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 just do it so after we kind of wrote it i just started um got like a little home studio set up and just started kind of tracking stuff and adding things to it and just just did what felt right and kind of called it as a finished song soon after that so yeah it was a nice process Sick, sick. A little bit of a change up from your normal uh, process, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, totally. And having a bit of that extra freedom of time because I was in a home studio as opposed to using working out of a studio, there was like a bit less pressure of money being spent, you know, on a studio rate. So I could kind of at any point I want just start doing some things and trying stuff. And if I didn't like it, get rid of it or revisit it the next day and not not worry about having to make like a final decision at the end of a day or something. Mm -hmm. And then that way you don't burn yourself out either or possibly overwork something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. So let's dive into the vibe of Garden of Truth here because it's described as a post-apocalyptic song, but it's definitely got a uh, very positive vibe to it, energy to it still, whereas like even though the world maybe ending possibly on the verge of love can still exist growth can still exist yeah exactly i mean that was exactly the message of the song when lyrically i was writing it i mean i felt i feel like our world has been so into this like apocalypse pop culture i guess you can call it for the past like maybe five years in terms of you know, zombie movies and TV shows, like everything just, it seemed like it was very in it or it's been in. Um, And, and, you know, people like learning, learning things to, if like being self-sustainable and stuff, like if something did happen, it just felt like it's been, we've been talking about it for so much in our pop culture for the past five years. And then all of a sudden something actually happens. That's obviously not, remotely close to like a like a major apocalypse that you'd see in a movie (laughs) Mm -hmm. um but but to see kind of how everyone reacted in both negative and positive ways was really interesting um around the world so this was just kind of yeah a bit of like a light-hearted kind of like i I didn't want to just write about this looming darkness of the of the of covid that was hanging over us but more just a bit of a playful um idea about kind of the pandemic and apocalypse and and how really it just if anything i hope that it makes people realize what's important is is community and 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 living through love as opposed to fear you know Mm -hmm. absolutely it's you don't realize how important your neighbors are some days until maybe oh dang like this person might be able to help me get groceries in a world where everything is shut down or yeah, all this stuff is sold out at a store. How do I find it? Like all of these situations that people never thought they were going to have to encounter in their lifetime suddenly became a reality. Even if it was just for a short period of time, it became a reality. And yeah, exactly. That idea of working together, like you're talking about, it's just, it's important. And I think, uh, I, I think this has definitely brought, brought it out in people which is great Mm -hmm, definitely the type of people who are susceptible to the community lifestyle definitely you could see that growth in the world and suddenly it's like oh maybe we need to learn how to make bread oh maybe we should invest in solar panels maybe we should do this like a lot of people started thinking long term into what are skills that i could use that maybe i didn't need before yeah oh totally for sure I think even I think especially for artists and musicians who 
or I mean anyone in entertainment related stuff who lost a lot of work, I've noticed just started kind of picking up extra, you know, new hobbies and and skills, which has been interesting to see. Mm -hmm. And then even just how the music community had to shift and a lot of people doing online shows and a lot of video content and live video so that they could stay connected to the communities that they have built throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's been a lot of that that switch too, which is, yeah, which has been good to learn about personally. Mm -hmm. How have you adapted those waters? Yeah, well, I mean, I... I've definitely dove a bit into the like making making videos and and content in a sense. I don't always like using that term, but I guess at the end of the day, I we like we, artists are kind of content creators mm -hmm. in that social media realm, and that's what I've uh, embraced a little bit more. I've definitely been a bit reluctant in the past just because I was touring so much and and that side of the music world was going well for me um, but then without that yeah it kind of made me realize that well I need to have some other way of not only just sharing my music with people but but staying creative that's what I I realized it took me a bit to kind of figure out what like what is my purpose in this content creation game now that everyone like you said is is doing and for me it was just realizing that the content creation was just, I mean, what I needed to do, I guess what I love doing is creating at the end of the day, regardless of if it's music or whatever, I just, I need to create to kind of help my own sanity. And, and I think it was, it, it was an interesting way to figure out how can I still entertain my fans and new fans and, and connect with people through, through making content. So, yeah, so I've been doing some videos I did. A, I tried doing this funny thing that I've never done before, which was kind of like a, a blog type thing. And we only did three episodes, but I did this thing called quarantine fashion, where, <laughs> where I just did like, I just made silly, like I took an object that was like I took a clothing object and then I cut it up and turned it into another clothing object, like super, not really actual fashion. <laughs> I mean. So, but just like a funny way to kind of, you know, pass the time when you're when when you're at home, right? Like funny ways to be creative. Make an apocalypse uh, outfit, hey? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So doing that, and then just still trying to share little videos of performances and and recording performances for people, and and doing the whole virtual, the virtual festivals and live streams like that, which has been a a, a tough learning curve, but it's. I think everyone's kind of going through that same same thing. Mm -hmm, no doubt. It's when everybody has to learn at the same time and there's not very many people to guide, whereas normally there usually is some form of mentors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bring the down into your space Not blood as I the shade, your lips the taste like summer rain. I feel a warm in your embrace. Lay the down under your stars and me to sleep with crashing sounds. When I hear the call. Fall into the ocean blue 
Let's talk about the other single that you released here during the pandemic, Wild Rose. It received quite a bit of good feedback being put on numerous playlists, over 50 if I believe correctly. It was named SoCan Song of the Week. It was even featured on Q. Yeah, I mean, that was that, that was a sweet, sweet thing, all that. It's always good when you get some good um, good shows and, and playlists and and uh, and so can recognizing you yeah that song was actually that that song was actually co-written by the same guitar player daniel rougeau who co-wrote the um garden of truth with me and that song i actually started writing it about a year ago and um kind of took it on the road with me when i was touring through where was I touring? I was I was touring through Hong Kong and then Australia and then I was in Vietnam. And it was a pretty crazy it was a crazy year because when I went into Hong Kong, um, it was during the protests. I don't know if you remember that or were following it. Oh wow. There was a big uh, dem- democratic pro- protest um last pretty much I guess a year ago today roughly mm-hmm. i mean it was ongoing and it's still ongoing but that that month i went was at a peak and so like i went into hong kong and was kind of experiencing all that and then i went into australia and they had some of the worst summer wildfires that they ever had in australia and and in both those countries i got had like to rejig the tour a bit and deal with some cancellations and then when i went into vietnam to do a short tour that like COVID was already a thing then. And that was in January because it was happening earlier in Asia, obviously. Oh, wow. And then by the time I got back to Canada in, in February, it was, um, or sorry, March, it was pretty much, I guess, just happening in Canada. Mm -hmm. That was just around the time we were starting to shut down. Yeah, exactly. So I had this like crazy experience. And then I was, I had that new song that, that I was kind of playing at the shows, testing out. Um, and I was kind of writing and changing parts as, as the tour was going on. And and it kind of just became as I was thinking about the travels and when I got back, it was just, the song was just kind of like an escape, you know? It was a bit, uh, a bit of a way for me to write about mentally escaping all the negativity that's, that happens in our lives, um, not just this past year, but I think all the time as as people, we go through a lot of negative stuff, and and I think that's fine. We need to like go through those and go through the emotions, but sometimes it's good to have something to just think about or listen to or watch, and it takes you on a bit of a mental vacation, you know, so to speak. So yeah, so that song was kind of lyrically just about getting away and uh, finding for me my own escape which is often in warm places near the ocean (laughs) (laughs) so there's definitely that vibe in the song uh and yeah kind of similar idea to 
Garden of Truth. I was I recorded it pretty much at the home studio, so it didn't have as much pressure of the studio time. And I had a bit of a direction for it. I kind of did want it to get picked up a bit from from radio and stuff. So we we tr- stuck a little bit more to uh, using those tools, so to speak, for for crafting a song that would work for that. Awesome. Awesome. Definitely capturing that vibe of a very uh, crazy last year. Yeah. Yeah. But also like not to not stressing people out about it either. (laughs) You know, an escape, like you said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which we all definitely do need for sure. All right. So you mentioned that you're in going into the studio to work on a full length album. So what exactly does the rest of 2020, the beginning of 2021, hold for Tennyson King? The goal is to finish this record in the month of November, at least kind of my tracking part of it. I'm working with a, a very cool producer by the name of Ross Hayes Citrullo um, in Toronto. And yeah, we're just kind of tracking tracking everything this month last weekend we did a bunch of the drum and bass and we had um one of my favorite bands do you know the band bahamas yes the guy yeah so we got i love that sound and that band and uh, and we got um his bass player to come in to do the bass for the album it was a super cool treat for me Dar- darcy yates is his name yeah and that was awesome experience for me to kind of play with him and and get his like get his style of how he played on the Bahamas records onto my record. Um, And yeah, next for the rest of the month, we're just going to finish do the vocals and guitars and keys and stuff. Um, And then hopefully we're aiming to release kind of like summer ish 2021. It's not confirmed yet. It's just, that's the goal. But, you know, I think we're going to like many musicians are playing it a bit by ear, depending on what's, what's going to happen with um with covid and with shows because we want to release it and be able to tour um tour to promote it so we're still kind of figuring that out and just and just rolling with what's happening but yeah it's hard to uh tell what exactly the future holds when borders are closed and all of those fun things yeah exactly and and shows i mean i feel like shows will be happening next summer they just might be They'll just probably be a bit different and it's just adjusting and making sure it also works. Mm-hmm, for sure. You did recently get the chance to play a socially distanced show though near home. Did I? Oh yeah, I did. Although oh, <laughs> I don't remember the things I did. <laughs> um, what did I, sh- what show did I play? Oh, I played a, I guess this was back in September. If that's what you're thinking of. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was just like this area in Toronto called the Junction, the Junction Triangle, which is like just northwest of the core of the city. Um, and there's some wonderful, it's a wonderful music community in that neighborhood. And somebody, Michael Novowski, who runs one of the venues there, he put on this kind of street, I guess, concert for the evening and just had four or five singer songwriters play during the night. And that was really cool that was like it was unbelievably overwhelming the like i think the emotions of of all the artists and everyone watching just seeing and hearing live music and and being out and stuff so yeah that was cool but i haven't actually done any other shows since then do you have any uh online performances coming up i actually do i'm playing at the timing of it is an australian time though I'm playing um, this festival called the Bendigo Blues and Roots Festival, which is based in Australia. And I usually play that festival when I'm out there touring. Um, So I have a virtual performance for them that's on Sunday at 6 p.m. Australian time, which is, I think, I don't even think that's a possible time for Canadians because I think that's like 3 a.m. or 4 (laughs) a.m. So are you actually doing the performance at 3 a.m. then or are you pre-recording it? No. It's a it's a pre-recorded. Okay, okay. Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the festivals now, or maybe I shouldn't give it away. 
<laughs> but a lot of festivals, sorry if I'm giving it away for a lot of people, but some festivals are often pre-recorded because they don't, just to deal with the internet issues. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think, and I feel like most people know this at this point, they've seen enough virtual concerts, but it's just you get a way better quality video performance if it's pre-recorded. Um, especially when you have a bunch of artists doing it from home because everyone's internet is slightly different, you know? Mm-hmm. You might get that one person who's in the country and using satellite internet and has, like, terrible latency. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I did one. I did a concert festival where I was streaming live, and it didn't... Um, and my internet was kind of going in and out, and it was really, really laggy. So... Yeah, so that that's so yeah, I'm not actually waking up that early to play. <laughs> <laughs> what's good, I was going to say I was like, oh, I better have a place that's uh nice and quiet." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> End up having the cops show up in the middle of a performance. Yeah, I know. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> They're not their cops are not that early, are they? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah. All right. So normally, like we've said, you're usually on the road in Australia, sort of experiencing the van life. So maybe say there's somebody who's listening who has always dreamed of the van life and maybe after the world opens back up, maybe they finally want to follow that dream. What advice do you have for traveling, touring, living out of a van? Oh, man, I've got a lot. Um, My first advice would be to definitely do it. If you're listening and it's something you thought about, you should you should take a pause at everything and just go and jump right into it because it's a it's an amazing experience, especially um, I mean, speaking from doing it in Australia specifically, it's. The, the country of Australia is a beautiful country and it's very easy for us Canadians to get around. Um, the weather is nice and you can always like one of my, one of my favorite things about the van life was um, when I would have to find a place to sleep, I would just drive my van to the closest parking spot or spot um, near the ocean or the beach. And, and sometimes you literally you'll be between a property that's like a million dollars and the ocean. And you have, you're in this like $2,000 van, but you have the better real estate. Uh, like, <laughs> the ocean, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's like, it's the ultimate freedom in terms of advice is, I guess, well, with, with, with Australia, when you, when you go, there's a lot of vans that you can buy. I guess I would just, the one lesson I learned is that I bought a bit of a, a, a van that had mechanical or had issues from, from some backpackers. Oh, dang. And I ended up spending a little bit extra money than I wanted to fixing it after I bought it. So in retrospect, I would have been way better off just spending like 50 or 100 bucks and like having a mechanic check it before I bought it. That's, yeah, a lesson learned that I would definitely pass on to other people who are looking to buy a van. And, yeah, I mean, I think a key thing about that lifestyle is just being open to the possibilities and the and the opportunities that could happen in your life. Like, not to be too set on schedules and plans because things might change. And, um, and it's good to go into that sort of life knowing that so that you don't you know, you don't stress about things if it, if things change, you know? Absolutely. You got to go with the flow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, honestly, if anyone who's listening has more questions, definitely message and contact me and I'll give you like, cause there's so many little things too, right. That would take a while for me to get into here, but I, I love um, giving travel tips to people cause I love traveling. So hit me up if you want to know more. <laughs> What's the best way for them to contact you? Uh, just message me on Instagram or Facebook or email. I check pretty much all that stuff. But Instagram seems to be the, the hip thing these days. That's where the, all the action is. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Tennyson King, TK, thank you so much for joining me here today to tell us 
the journey of these last two singles and a little bit of van advice and so much more. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, ambush. I hope that you, you big old pretty kitties, enjoyed this conversation with Tennyson King, and I definitely hope you enjoyed the tracks we played for you today as well, like Wild Rose, like Garden of Truth. And you can find both of these tracks as well as the rest of Tennyson King's catalog on your favorite music streaming service. When you're there, hit follow. So when Tennyson King releases the rest of this album, you have it in your notifications, on your phone, in your hands, and in your ears. A-S-A-P. And now... Now it's time for our final Roaring DTP thank yous of this episode. And the first one of those goes out to Tennyson King for joining us here today to take us behind the music, behind his journey up until this point. And I also want to thank him for reaching out on Instagram so that we could go ahead and set up this conversation. If you're an artist, you can definitely reach out as well. Please go ahead. You can do so on our Instagram, or you can even email us at desert.tiger.podcast at gmail.com. We also have a roaring DTP thank you for you, the AM, the AM Bush, for joining us here on this episode for tuning in like you love to do. If you have yet to join up with the ambush, it's so simple. It's as easy as hitting subscribe on the podcast listening service that you are using right now. You can also help Desert Tiger grow by sharing this episode with your friends, with your family, anyone who you think would enjoy it. You can review the show by giving us a big old five-star review on your podcast listening service app of choice you can also help desert tiger out by heading on over to deserttigermerch.com and copying yourself something to represent the show everywhere you go and ambush you don't know just how much even one of these actions helps us out all right am This upcoming Tuesday, November 17th, 2020, on the Desert Tiger Podcast, we are joined by country singer-songwriter Danny Strong as we dive behind the music of her new album, Undefined. And let me tell you right now, this is a powerful conversation. This is an inspiring firing conversation some of the things that danny has overcome to get to this point and the things that she continues to balance to continue to bring her voice into the world to continue to inspire well i just can't wait for you to join me next tuesday when it all goes down and until then You know what it is. At least I hope you do. At this point, because I want you, Ambush, to go out and find your mountaintop, to find your oasis, the thing that makes your heart sing, scream, and, you know, just feel like you're ah you know that thing that thing that makes you want to roar out from the bottom of your heart find that thing craft that thing grow with that thing and once you finally have grown with that thing show the world just how mighty your roar is and how wonderful and beautiful it can be and you too are beautiful and sometimes we don't hear it enough so i'm gonna tell you again and i hope that you believe me because you are beautiful my wonderful pretty kitties my big old ambush 
and until next week. Bye, and keep on planting some wondrous seeds in your garden of truth.